Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another Wednesday night, a live stream with me, Lee Everett. As always, very, very happy for you guys to be here who are live and everyone who's watching on the replay, really, really appreciate it. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the um, house price index that Halifax brought out about five, six days ago. As you know, every week we go over the latest news about what's happening in the property market, what's going on with house prices, and also the opportunity for you guys to share any questions that you have. I myself will help answer as well as everyone in the community really loves to help try and get involved and in sharing their experiences as well. So if you do have any questions you want to run by me or anybody else in the group, uh, please pop it in the community tab down below and we can uh, we can all help each other out. So as we're getting more and more people uh, coming onto the stream, we'll say hello. So first and foremost, we've got Paul RS, always a regular here, always on time. So welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. JJ, evening all. Evening to you as well, JJ. Taki, welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. And Diva, uh, an ongoing regular as well. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Planet Pokywood, also again, evening, good evening, good evening. So as you know, guys, this is going to be um, talk about house prices. <laughs> Hi, Ian, how are you doing? How am I still in a shirt? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been, well... <laughs> It's been a long day, a long sweaty day, and I haven't had a chance to even change yet. So I've had my dinner, and I'm straight on here talking to you guys. So uh, yeah, it's it's been hot. It's been hot. <laughs> uh, hi, Lee. Hello, CL. Hello, Abade. Welcome back, Alex. Welcome back, my friend. E Jane. Welcome, welcome, Steve Fish. Welcome back again. Thank you so much, guys, to uh, for, for for joining us. Um, say hello to everyone. Get used to um, everybody as well. We're all very helpful. All very we're getting close aren't we we're getting close with uh with all of our stories and sharing stuff so um just a little bit of housekeeping first of all i'm going to make um e jane my resident moderator they were well, last week i think i've done a pretty good job so uh, they're going to look out for any spam comments and, and also help out of any question as they know it is an unpaid role so please say thank you to jane for for helping me out um we're going to be talking about the house price uh, index for, for Halifax, what they've been saying has happened in the last um, last few weeks. So if you could also give the video a thumbs up as well, because I should have said that a second ago and I'm getting off track. So please give the uh, video a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. So we've got a few people in the stream now. 22. Fantastic. That is a pretty good number for so early on. So welcome, guys. Welcome. If everyone can give it a thumbs up as well, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, hi, Zara. Welcome to the stream. CL. Thanks, EJ. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so you're getting gratitude already, gratitude already. So let's share the screen and let's see what's been going on with uh, house prices, according to Halifax, one of the biggest lenders in uh, the UK. How do we get this? All right. Do you want to see my mug on here or not? Um, there we go. You see a little bit of me still. Right. <clears throat> As you can see from the top of this bar, uh, average house price is at £294,845, which is at a massive, massive increase of 1.8% from last month. That's still up 3.8% in the last quarter. And according to Halifax, house prices have gone up 13% in the last 12 months. So some real interesting figures here because what we shared last week with Zoopla's information was that that house price growth was a, a hell of a lot less. Um, but Halifax, who, um, as I say, they are part of Lloyd's banking groups. So they have a huge um huge amount of data that they can they can take information from and and, and, and present it to us so from their figures that they're doing 1.8 percent in june annual house price growth 13 percent. a lot of people have been predicting dips and again the property market is just defying defying every pessimist out there in terms of a property crash should have happened by now recession all those bits and pieces and the property market seems to be immune somehow at the moment so um yeah there i don't know how i don't know oh, it's a lack of supply as we all know as we all know so as you can see in this little graph here uh the blue line is the annual change so look at that massive shoot up from around what's that about 11 something percent all up to 13.8 uh three month quarterly change going up going up look at that from march's quarter straight up there and also the monthly change flat for the last few months and then this month it's gone up so it's it's certainly not doing what the experts predict what have you guys found the last week hey eh? uh what have you been been going into what's been going on 
1.8%. Yeah, 1.8%. 1.8%. And this is all at a time when the cost of living is going up. Interest rates are going up. The Bank of England are going to be meeting again in the next couple of weeks to decide whether interest rates should go up. And I think it's more a thing of not if they should go up, but by how much. Last time I've done the interest rate increase, um, I think there's seven governors and I think three governors voted to go up half a percent rather than 0.25%. So there is growing, growing um feelings and thoughts within the Bank of England that the interest rates hikes should be more than what we've been doing for the last few months. So it is a uh, um, a worrying time if you haven't got your mortgage secured yet, if interest rates do go up. Um, so yeah, we'll go into that a little bit later. So Russell Galley, the managing director of Halifax, says the biggest housing market so the UK housing market defied any expectations of a slowdown with the average property price up 1.8% in June, the biggest monthly rise since 2007. Let that sink in for a second. The biggest monthly rise since 2007 amidst, right, cost of living increase and interest rates going up. So since the last massive crash, this is the biggest jump we've had. <sighs> This means house prices have now risen every month over the last year and are up 6.8%, 6.8% or £18,849 in cash terms so far in 2022. So nearly £19,000, the average house has gone up between January and now. And for those people who waited, waited for the housing market to, to, to dip, they've got a hope. They've got a hope that house prices drop by nearly 7% just to be able to buy what you could have bought back in January. And you know my thoughts on it, guys. I'm sure we'll go over it. I'm sure we'll go over it. The supply and demand imbalance, which is what I've been saying for, for donkey's years, uh, continues to be the reason why house prices are rising so sharply. Demand is still strong, though activity levels have slowed to be in line with pre-COVID averages, while the stock of available properties for sale remains extremely low. So what we're noticing or what I'm certainly noticing is there isn't as many new people looking for properties. Um, so there is, there's, there's, sorry, there's, a, there's still the same amount of people looking for properties, but the amount of properties coming onto the market is still low. So those people are still having to fight over the few properties that are on the market. I'm probably about 75% down on what I normally have on the market at the moment. Normally I have about 130 and I'm at sort of 40, 50. So um, there is a massive, massive property shortage, as I'm sure you guys are going to be um, uh, experiencing as well. Promote, welcome back. Welcome back. I have tried to email you back throughout the day. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. I've not had a chance to check my emails. Um, I had quite a few emails come in the last week and I've been trying to get back to everyone. If I haven't replied to you yet about your question, I will get around to doing it. If I haven't after a few days, just give me a nudge. Give me a nudge. Jane, I thought the cost of increase and the interest rate rise would have slowed things down. Maybe people are rushing to get ahead of the next increase in the winter. I, I, I think that, and that is what I'm advising. If, um, I mean, me personally, my, <laughs> my um, gas and electricity thing runs out in October and I am bricking at how much that's going to go up. I'm still fixed from a year ago. So, um yeah, I, I'm really, really not looking forward to how much my gas electricity bill is going to go up in uh, three months' time. So, yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same. Feeling the same. But if you can get your mortgage fixed now before the next increase uh, or the subsequent increases that are going to happen over the next uh, next few months, then that is what I would advise. That is what I'd advise. You're a star. No, no, you're the star. Thank you for joining us. Can you all hear me all right? Because I've put a little bit of back, back, uh, background music in. and I don't know if it's too loud because... I can't have the speakers on here, otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear myself speak. So let me know if you can hear the music or if it's too loud. Let's get back into the report. Property prices have so far appeared to have been largely insulated from the cost of living squeeze. This is partially because right now the rising cost of living is being felt by most people on lower incomes who are typically less active in buying and selling houses. That does make sense. does make sense. The, the market at the moment is being underpinned by first-time buyers who have been able to save up deposit in the last couple of years, get 95% mortgages, getting help from the bank of mum and dad or nan and granddad to, to up those um, up those deposits. And then also you've got people looking to downsize because of the cost of living, want to sell their big family house and buy something smaller. So those are two types of buyers that are going to be about no matter what the market is doing. Um, so yeah, there's, there's going to be, and, and people that tend to have bigger houses are generally higher earners, uh, and first-time buyers who are looking right now 
generally are on decent money and have adequate savings behind them. So at the moment, they're not feeling the pinch um, of, of this cost of living crisis as much as maybe other people on, on less money. Like I'm on decent money and I'm still not looking forward to paying out more than I have to. <laughs> uh, in contrast, high earners are likely to be able to use extra funds saved during the pandemic with the latest injury data showing that mortgage lending has increased by the highest amount since last September. So I, I think they're saying that um, mortgage levels have started to slow down as in the amount of mortgages being offered, but the amount, the amount that people are borrowing is... Yeah, increased. <laughs> so less people getting mortgages, but the, the banks are still handing out more and more money. That's the cost of living, isn't it? That's the cost of living. Hello, Abe. Thank you very much. You can still hear me. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So, of course, the housing market will not remain immune from the challenging economic environment. But for now, it continues to demonstrate, as it has done over the last couple of years, the unique combination of factors impacting prices. One of these remains the huge shift in demand towards bigger properties, with average prices for detached houses rising by almost twice the rate of flats over the past year. Um, flats haven't gone up particularly particularly well, as you can see, it's nearly, nearly half. Um, but I, I think the the massive rise in detached houses, I, I don't think is going to be there um, as much coming into the rest of this year. With bigger houses come bigger bills. And I think some people may look to maybe adjust their current house as opposed to buying a bigger property, especially if interest rates are going up. They might decide to remortgage and extend or go in the loft or, or something like that, as opposed to taking on uh, a bigger property with all those additional costs that that, that that come into it. I don't know what you guys would do. I don't know what you would do. Um in time, though, the pre uh, in time, though, increased pressure on the household budgets from inflation and higher interest rates should weigh more heavily in the housing market, given the impact it has on affordability. Our latest research found that the strong rise in property prices over the last two years, coupled with a much slower wage growth, has already pushed the house price to income ratio up to record level. So I think the um, for a single person to buy the first sorry to buy their first property um, on their wage, I think it's nine point one times your average wage for a single occupant. Uh, uh, applicants so yeah that is a record record high number got a few other more uh, information here northern ireland once again topped the table for annual house price growth at 15.2 percent in the last year that's crazy wales continues to a strong rate of growth weight a rate of growth 14.3 southwest 14.2 and scotland 9.9 .9. london lagging behind 7.1 um, but with the average house price being over half a million pounds. So uh, that would be quite expensive. So what else do we have here? Blimey, look at that. Look at that. So since June 2021, June 2021, um, I didn't put the thing on here, did I? <laughs> June 2021, the average house price was 260973 And now we're at 294 Basically, 295 grand. That is nuts. That is nuts. <sighs> anyway, what do you think, guys? What do you think? This is what we're about. Tell me what you guys are experiencing. Um, I'll put my email address up here for you. Do, do, do. Uh, Jimmy, welcome. Welcome. Let's get this up. Uh, just lost out on a property offering 12% over the valuation. Do you think it's worth offering over this to get the on the ladder ASAP or continue to offer sensible and wait for it to level out? First of all, Jimmy, I don't know when it will level out. There's no um, uh, no crystal ball which is going to allow me to give you that information. But I think if you think the property is worth the money it's going to take to to secure it, then then go for it. If you've done your research and going 13, 14, 15% over um, what what you think it's worth, is, 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 is it just doesn't make sense. You can only pay what you feel comfortable in paying. Do your research. Make sure that other properties have sold for a similar price. If they haven't, then that's a good indication that the property is overvalued and would potentially get downvalued anyway by a mortgage uh, survey, which although is rare, it is happening a little bit more often now, a little bit more often. But yeah, you've, you've, you've got to weigh up the pros and cons by paying, you lost out offering 12%. So that's that's nuts. If you think it's worth it, if you think it's worth it, then, then do it, then do it. You've got to weigh up that extra. Again, I don't know the level of, of, of figures we're talking at here, Jimmy, but if it's going to cost you an extra £5,000 to secure the property, um, that's it's not going to be much 
in terms of how adding more money onto your mortgage payment over a 20, 25, 35 year mortgage. But if you were to miss out on the current round of interest rates and they go up again in a couple of weeks time, then borrowing um, the same money now is going to cost you more money over the long term. So there's a couple of things you need to weigh up. You do need, need it to, to, to weigh up. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, give me some, if you want to email me some more information, I'll put the, my email address back up here because um, yeah, I think I got rid of it a bit quick there. Um, hi, Tick. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Email address is there. So if you want to ping me an email, you always can. You always can. Um, it might be a bit blurry for you, EJ. It might be a bit blurry. I, I think I'm streaming in 1080. No, in 720. I'm a tight ass and I won't pay to upgrade to £40 a month to stream in HD. Um, but it shouldn't be any worse than normal. It shouldn't be any worse than normal. <laughs> Might just be a haggard face. <laughs> Steve, in London, market seems to have stabilised for a while. I think there are regional differences also. Yeah, yeah. I mean, London, there's a lot of flats, a lot of flats, and there's not as many people looking for flats at the moment, although I'm told that is starting to change because they haven't gone up in price as much as houses and, and, and whatnot, that more and more people are finding buying a flat to be the most affordable way to buy in London. So that, that increase in, in, in flats has started to increase. Um, but yeah, definitely regional differences. As, as we can see in the report, um, London 7.7, uh, North Ireland 15, nearly 15, well, 15 and a half percent. So there, there really is some, some massive regional differences and also for the type of property as well. Uh, where are we? Oh. Bob, welcome to the channel. If you can give it a, a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. I will be checking throughout the stream how many likes we do have. And if it isn't anywhere near the amount of viewers we have, which is 40 right now, I'm going to be really upset. So, hi, Lee. I found your channel a couple of weeks ago, so I'm a noob here. Nate, hey, don't, don't worry about that. We're all we're all noobs at one point. The community are very, very helpful. So if I can't help or if I miss it, there's people who will be helping helping you out. So don't, don't be scared to ask anything. We're, we all bought our first house once. And some people are doing it right now who can help you as well. So we're looking at houses with solar panels and batteries. In your opinion, are they worth having to offset increased energy? If the same identical house was for sale without the solar panels and the batteries and it was 10 grand cheaper, would you buy it, Bob? Or even five grand cheaper? That would be the question I'd ask myself because... Although energy prices are increasing crazily amount at the moment, there should come a time where that tapers off. And we're not, we're not going to get back down to um, the type of energy costs that we had 18 months, two years ago. There's no way they're going to come down 50, 60% over the next few years. They'll get used to having that level of money and it will just sort of start to start to sort of uh, um, hover at more than what we were paying a couple of years ago, but less than now. But yeah, if, um, if you are someone who likes to do good for the environment um, and it can save you money provided you're not overpaying for the property for that. So me personally, if they're owned outright, the solar panels are owned outright, so the current owner paid for them themselves, haven't got them on a lease or anything like that, and you're not having to pay any extra for the property, then I think it could be a good thing to have. If it's going to offset some of the uh, energy price increases, then then, then perfect. But you've got to look into, ma look into maintenance, um, what your feeding tariff is, if you, how much money you're going to get back from the grid. But yeah, if 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 it's worth it to you, then go for it. But I personally wouldn't base my my house buying pr uh, purchase based on solar panels and batteries. I think for me, more importantly, area, position, type of property, those sort of things would be higher up the list rather than uh, solar panels at the moment. In 10, 20 years time, it may be a massive big thing for people. But at the moment, buying for now, for me personally, no, Bob. Um, but that's entirely up to you. But welcome to the channel. Welcome. Hopefully you can come in next Wednesday as well. So, all right, I'm a bit blurry to you too. Hopefully that will help mask out the, the bags under the eyes and the Stephen Mulhern face. Because that's an ongoing joke we have here. Uh, Steve, we've got a price down of a property from four, uh, 535 to 520, but we've, we've been the only offer after four weeks at 515. It sounds odd to me. What could be wrong about the place? It's a flat in Greenwich, London. So, uh, we've got... Uh, it, it too much i mean over that half a million pound um you've got different sort of stamp duty levels as well so being that little bit over half a million quid will um will certainly uh, put a few people off of the extra stamp duty they have to pay um flats also i mean 
there's not as many people looking for flats as 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 we said. So yeah, there's 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 a, there's a few reasons why that that might be the case. Um, looking at the stamp duty on a, on a on a property for a first time buyer buying at five hundred and fifteen grand, you're looking at just under sixteen thousand pounds. Sixteen grand in stamp duty, which you've got to find on top of all your your deposit and stuff like that. And somebody buying that flat to move in and sell to selling a property, it's the same fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. So it's a lot of money to find, but coming just underneath that sort of threshold, people will save money. So it might be worth that vendor coming in a bit lower. <laughs> It's a bit lower. In fact, I'm giving you wrong advice there. The stamp duty threshold is at nine nine hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. Sorry, it's been a long day. The heat. I'm going to edit that bit out. <laughs> Don't blame you, mate. Wonder if it was me. It's intimately blurry. So it might, it might, it might be, it might be my my internet connection. Blame talk, talk. Blame talk, talk. Okay. The Halifax report seems realistic to me. What I see in Birmingham, I see the affordability of houses are starting to become out of range for many, hence less people able to compete. Yeah, so I'm certainly noticing that there are less people for each property on the market. That could be because there's a bit more choice for buyers. So um, that could be why you're not competing with as many people, or it could be the um, yeah the, the affordability just just too high for, for your local buyers there. So yeah, certainly something which I'm experiencing down here in uh, uh, North Essex. Um, I agree, Taki. 300k is the new 200k here, and no increasing wages. A lot of friends have either had to ask family for contribution or rent for long, yeah, yeah. And the problem with the Bank of England saying don't give people pay rises because it's not going to help inflation, but when you've got house inflation so bloody high, so bloody high, the only way that the government can get people onto the ladder which seems to be a massive thing for them they want to get people by generation by we're called rather than generation bent are us it, it's 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 crazy that the bank of england saying don't give people pay rises because it's going to push up inflation if you don't give people pay rises they can't afford rent because rent's going up every bloody six months to a year and mortgages getting more and more expensive plus they get houses are more expensive to buy so it's a vicious circle a vicious circle and i don't think it's going to get any easier anytime soon which is why as you know guys i'm saying buy now if you can buy the house you need not the house you want i'm going to get t-shirts with that printed oh, all right i had a house offer accepted on a property fantastic excellent I lost out on this house three months ago. The chain broke down this week and the estate station contacted me Monday to ask if I was still interested. Ah, fantastic news. Let's give everyone some love to Zara for, for, for getting a property. Well done. Well done. Really happy for you. And this is, do you know why it fell through three months ago? Did I tell you why? Hopefully it wasn't downvalued. And I hope you, you got it for a decent price as well, Zara. But yeah, I'm so pleased for you, as is Jane. Ah, oh, really happy. Really happy. What else you've got here? The same token, EJ, 40k salary is a new 30k salary. We're living in different. It is bloody difficult. It's bloody difficult. And I said, everything's going up. I had an email through the other day that my childcare is going up by nearly 10%. It's just nuts. Nuts. Doesn't seem to be any breaks coming, does there? Uh, thanks, EJ. Uh, I think I've got. I think the good report I built with the agent really helped. This was Lee's advice, and I'm grateful for that. Fantastic, fantastic. I think that's the thing you need to do. Build relationships like we're doing here in the community. Build relationships with those cheap suits, gelled hair, estate agents. <laughs> we have our uses. We have our uses. We'd much rather sell to somebody that we know is actively buying, uh, who can buy, who, you know, speaking to, taking an interest in, in, in what we've got for sale. So I'm really, really pleased that that has, has worked. Whether it, well, we don't know, but hopefully it played a part that they thought of you first rather than the other viewings on there. So that is that is fantastic. It's fantastic. Chigo sharing a love as well. Congratulations. And Louise, welcome back, Louise. Saying congratulations as well. Okay. I'm so happy with you. I sound like a decent agent. We're not all bad, are we? We're not all bad. <laughs> we, we have our uses. Oh, wow. That's, that's fantastic news. I'm really, really happy about that. Every week we seem to get some, some good news, which... In a world which there's so much crap going on, having somebody secure their house is a, is a fantastic feeling. Let's just hope it doesn't take five months to go through, which is what Right Move is saying. So that is, um, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be in before Christmas. Hope you'll be in before Christmas. Good luck with that. Good luck, uh, James. Welcome back, James. Hi, Lee. What's up, Lee? I've had enough accepted on a property after 18 months of searches. Searching, don't 18 months, James. 
the patience you must have had. The patient, fantastic. Well, well done, well done. Again, really good. Two two pieces of good news today. Uh, James, did you notice a massive increase in prices from when you started looking to now? Because technically, we should be looking at like close to twenty percent increase in house prices. Did you have to adjust what you was going for, or um, were you able to sort of um, compromise on an area and get sort of the type of house that you wanted? But no, really great, really great news for James and Zara tonight. So fantastic. The buyer's buyer pulled out in the chain, so not related to this. That's excellent. I got it for the offer I originally put in, which is great, considering three months ago. Excellent. So house prices have gone up, according to Halifax, this quarter, the last three months, 3.8%. So technically, technically, you've got that price should be for below market value because of your position. That is great news. That is great news. Oh, Joe, I'm really happy with that. Really happy with that. Um, bear with me, guys. Quite right, technical issue going on here. Oh, one second. Oh, I got my first YouTube paycheck um, come through a couple of days ago. Just want to thank you guys. So this month or last month in, in, in June, for everyone that's watched and supported the channel with super chats and super thanks and... Um, super stickers it's um yeah it's it's meant that i've been able to put some money into uh into i'm going to get some other bits and pieces i may upgrade this as well but no it's, it's been been fantastic to, to have that support from you guys it, it really does mean a lot um i know times are hard so every every sort of thank you give or sticky you give it it really does mean a lot so i know i know it's tough out there guys i know it's tough so thank you so much um yes we do love to see it we do love to see it Sarah sharing the love as well <laughs> all good i'm loving this guys loving this uh i want to build a rapport with the estate agent uh, but what if he's a top knob <laughs> leaves me a voicemail and asks for me to ring him back but then ignores my calls over our sisters have got in touch with him <laughs> so agents once they've sold a property right we have this typical thing um we've got what we wanted typical guy thing if you like we got what we wanted the sales chasing progression that that sort of part of it um that's the bit we don't like doing like the, like if you're trying to court someone let's go down that route right you, you put in the work you're all nice and happy you maybe then get the date and then what follows and then after that you sort of lose interest a little bit is that a good analogy for that i hope no i probably shouldn't have used that but yeah most agents they're paid for selling they're not paid for the sales progression so it's probably not the part of the job that most agents don't enjoy I personally, the sales progression part of it, yeah, it stops me from earning more money by selling houses. So I just want to get it over and done with or pass it on to somebody else as quickly as possible. So not unusual that an estate agent might be a bit of a knob. Um, of course, my calls, <laughs> since this got in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might, might want to find out what happened between him and your solicitor. <laughs> I was telling him, we've been priced out of almost all the areas we were looking in and are now looking even further afield. Keep going, yeah, yeah. I say, if you can't find the house you want where you want, then unfortunately that compromise that I talk about quite often can have to be location. Location is a key thing in terms of pricing. Location, location, location has a massive, massive effect on how much you're going to pay for a property. So this is, if you can find the perfect house or the, the house you need, but maybe not in the area that you want, then I think you can always move later. You can always, after you've built up some more equity, after your five years, two years of paying off uh, some of your mortgage, you can then look to buy the, the, the next house in, in the right area. But for me personally, Louise, I would, about, I would definitely be looking to secure a mortgage for the perfect, the, the right house, maybe compromise on the area if you have to. But I know, I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult because I would find it very hard to move from where I am now that'd be something that it would have to be really really a top house to get me to move away from where i am right now actually anyone else struggling to get quotes for recommended work after so yes tradesmen are bloody busy at the moment chigo bloody busy um offering free quotes i think it's a bit short-sighted of them not doing them because eventually work will dry up for tradesmen and all these people they haven't quoted for are going to find other tradesmen or women to do this work so yeah i think um that um yeah it is difficult because they are so busy. Just just keep persisting. Keep persisting. You, you will get some. And the busy ones, they're the ones you want to use because they're the ones who are busy because they've got a good reputation. If 
if you're getting a builder that can quote straight away and can come and do the work straight away, generally that's not a good sign, Chico. It is great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jane. Yes, I, I, this I don't see as work, so it's really nice to, to get something for doing this. I, I love chatting to you guys week in, week out, and uh, and, and sharing what's, what's going on. So, I uh, yeah, it's not work for me. So to get anything from doing this channel is is just, just absolutely fantastic. So, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, new to the channel. Welcome, Lynn. We don't buy it. Thanks for saying hello. Please give the, the, the live stream a thumbs up if you can help it. We've got 28 likes and we've got 41 people viewing. So if we can get that number up to 35, that'd be fantastic. Um, thank you for all the useful advice, Lee. You are welcome. In your opinion, does it make sense to buy in London now as an investment, but now we might move out of the country in five years? Hmm. <sighs> Five years would be the minimum I would look at the moment because we're not quite sure what's going to happen in the property market. The London property market does generally lead the way when it comes to house price growth. But at the moment, it's not. It's it's, it's the area with the lowest price growth. So you could argue that um, if we do revert back to normal times where London is the leading market in house price growth, then yeah, it, it, it could be that buying in London now could be a good investment. Um, but it might not be if 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 that appeal for the city doesn't come back like it has been before COVID, then you may find yourself buying a property in one of the lower lowest increasing parts of the country. So a lot of people looking for an investment will be looking for an investment for them as to make them money. I wouldn't class your home as an investment. I think you need to separate them two. If you're buying a home, buy it for a home, and if you do make money. When you come to sell, fantastic. If you don't, then at least you've had a roof over your head, a home for five years. Um, and as long as you break even and can pay off your mortgage, then you're no worse off, but you've lived in a lovely house for the last five years. I, no one has the right, the God-given right, I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, to make money from their house. People love to make money from their house, but there's no right that you will do most instances people do because house prices generally go up with a few dips in between but within five years you, you you should have made money you would have paid off some of the loan as well and have more equities but yeah it's, it's a difficult one to answer and if you're looking for an investment buy an investment if you're looking for your first home buy it as a first home and and, and enjoy it <coughs> excuse me okay do you not have another contact in, at the agents but you know, i have an excellent contact at my agent who's dedicated so yeah this is where an agent with a, a dedicated sales progressor um, or sales chaser um, can be fantastic for me as a as a sale as a salesman. Um, not so good for the solicitors because that is their one job to chase, 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 chase. And you as a buyer will be getting chase, 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 chase. But it will help the process go through quicker. Although it may not seem it, what the agents do is they get things sorted sooner rather than later. Where a solicitor may sit on something until the file just gets put in front of them an agent will make sure that file gets dealt with or at least looked at sooner rather than later but yeah a sales progresso in most agents is a good thing um doesn't sound like they have it by the sound of it uh, my other half is a tradesman i can't even get him to do stuff but that's nothing new <laughs> i do always hear that um <laughs> partners of tradesmen uh, they have the worst houses like i go around and value and sell my husband hasn't done x y and z uh yeah <laughs> touch welcome my friend welcome let's say hello to touch a regular i'm not going to tell you off for being late i just appreciate you being here so thank you very much uh but you know just this guy to be honest they seem a bit rude whenever i ring up always say he's on another call when i when they say my name and then rushes to get me off poor attitude what's wrong with these people they've got what they want they, they've got what they want they've got their sale now they're just going to hope it goes through quickly um <laughs> you're just in james man. they tend to like chocolates and fluffing up a bit try us approach instead <laughs> we normally like a glass of something or a bottle of something after uh after a completion if that's all right but uh, i've had a lot of um dr pepper today sugar free i'll touch with a super chat thank you very much my friend you are oh thank thank you thank you again that's not the first time you've done that so thank you so much Happy to say I've received my offer. Fantastic. Celebrations all around. How long did it take, Touch? Did it take long just for other first-time buyers here where people getting a mortgage can sort of gauge how long it took to get your mortgage offer. But that is absolutely fantastic news. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, really, really pleased for you. Really, really pleased. Oh, come on, guys. We're, we're at 
29 likes at the moment. 29 likes. We can do, we can do better than that. We can do better than that, can't we? Come on. Come on. <laughs> That'd be good if we could. Be good if we could. Uh, where are we? Oh, it's full of good news. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Exactly that. I hope this channel doesn't get popular to the point that owners and real estate agents get intel on our first time buy strategies. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to get the type of traction that um, I feel we deserve. Um, yeah, I, I want this channel to be big enough that people can find it, but not too big where um, people start using it against us. That makes sense. Like, I've, got a, I've got a very light, fine line I have to sort of tread during the week. Or Monday to Friday, nine till six thirty. I work for the sellers, so um, yeah, it's very difficult for me um, to switch off from working from the sellers. But when I sort of started seeing lots of questions in first-time buyer groups on Facebook, I thought I can I can help out with that. No one has first-time buyers don't have somebody that will help them out. That's not going to cost them anything. If you, you can hire a buying agent if you want, which will take a percentage of ever how much money you save off the price. Um, and I just like. I just like helping people. If only it paid the mortgage, eh? <laughs> I'd quit my job. <laughs> uh, congrats. Yes. Congratulations from Zara, who I'm not sure if you saw Touch secured a property today. So that's fantastic. Um, Steve, well, congrats. Congratulations. And Boa saying congratulations as well. So, yeah, this is um, been a very good week, isn't it, guys? It's been a very good week. On the back of house record-breaking house price growth, I think uh, having a, a couple of people file a place and a mortgage offer come out, I think it's great news, great news. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, Jane, that your, um, your sales going through nicely as well, progressing rather well. I hope that's still going through nicely with your, your cash buyer, which is good. Um, this stream will be a little bit shorter because, um, yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot of bits to do around the house with the other half so um i'm maybe going about 10 10 15 minutes guys all right so if you've got any questions please get them in and touch thank you again for the uh for, for the super chat really appreciate it i'm a seller and a buyer i think sellers can also help i know uh, what first time buyers want to say to sellers yet, so i hope yeah ej has been a fantastic help to me over the last few weeks so i wanted to say thank you so much because you've you've helped answer questions you've had a different angle on things as well from what i've i've said and you've actually reminded me of things as well throughout this uh <laughs> the last few weeks so thank you for that you're like uh like, yeah good good person to have helping so thank you insane thacker hi lee lived in my house for five years and looking to sell neighbor's garden is extremely overgrown and they can be noisy at times at the current market conditions do you think it will change minds depends how much is on the market where you are insane thacker um great name by the way i personally if you could always have a, a chat with the neighbor just say look i'm looking to sell my house would it be possible depending on the rapport you have with them you tidy your garden up a bit or can i help tidy your garden up something like that just so um they know that um their garden may put people off if the front garden's all right then first impression when people do drive-bys and whatnot then that that will be fine but it's when they come inside and see the, the rear garden. But have you called the police on your noisy neighbours? Have you made a report? Because if you have, you're going to have to sort of legally declare that. So hopefully you haven't done that. But at the moment, there's still record property shortage in St. Thacker. So I think if you do put it on the market, providing there's not too much competition, as in the same type of property for the same type of money that you're asking, you should do well and sell. I think right we were saying average house is taking 31 days to sell at the moment. So um, you should sell quite quickly. E Jane, they resold very, very quickly in this market. And as you can see, buyers are securing properties really quickly. Well, not really, but they, they, they're getting they're getting deals done. They're getting deals done. So there is a lot of buyers out there. So you shouldn't have any any trouble. But you can always come and ask the community. We've got buyers and sellers here. So um, yeah, ask away. Ask away. Add highly after. I've had the home buyers report back. There seems to be an issue with the roof covering and structure. Being quoted twelve thousand pounds. How do you think I should tackle this with the seller? So first and foremost, you probably want to cut um, a little bit um, of the report out and send it to the estate agent. Don't send the whole report. If you send the whole whole report, then if you don't buy the house, then you've just given that seller a free um, survey to use for the next one. All right. So I wouldn't send the report. Take a snapshot of it, send it to the estate agent, 
and say, look, this has come back in the uh, in the survey. Um, did they quote twelve thousand pounds the um, the surveyor, or did you get a quote for that? Um, this is how much I think it's going to cost. Is the owner willing to uh, either drop the full amount or meet me halfway? I think that's probably or, or offer anything off to help cover this cost, which wasn't expected. So that'd be how I would do it. You're, you're backing up your um, uh, your reduction with facts that the surveyors pointed it out and you've had a quote or a guesstimate is around twelve thousand pounds so yeah do that send it to the estate agent just that bit there and then um yeah see how you get on see how you get on oh god where am i uh boss where we are um mortgage offer took forever and one decline so this is when i stay optimistic because even if you declined even if you declined there are other lenders out there who will give people money so yeah fantastic well done well done really proud and, and thank you again for the super chat really really appreciate it the rc views welcome back my friend either your channel has great contact as always i was wondering at what point do i get the ta6 form on my first time buyer journey let me refresh my memory on that my friend ta6 <laughs> cool. i feel right embarrassed about that uh, oh that's time you should get that pretty quick depending on your solicitor hang on a second right yeah so that'd be one of the first things which the seller will fill out the property information questionnaire forms which is the ta6 uh fixtures and fittings form all those bits and pieces they sh they're one of the first things the seller fills out and sends back to their solicitor your solicitor should have that quite early doors in the first couple of weeks maybe three weeks so but some solicitors do hang on to that information and then give it to you all at the end when they're reporting to you but if you want that information sooner then definitely ask your sister if that form has been received and if they can send you a copy so you can go through it they may not want to do that because it doesn't fit in with their their timeline and how they get things to be done but if you want to see it and they've got it then yeah just just ask them drc but yeah that, that they should have that pretty early on should have it pretty early on if they haven't you can chase the estate agent to chase their seller um, and they'll, uh, they'll they'll get those forms filled out. Hi, Mayor Play. Welcome. You're late, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can always go back and rewatch it. You may have a couple of adverts to watch, <laughs> but no. Thank you for joining me. Thank you at quarter past or ten past nine. Thank you so much, uh, Lynn. In case of investment, my opinion would be a try to avoid London. Pool. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I say I personally wouldn't be investing in London. I don't have the money to invest in London personally. I'd be looking more up north for an investment. But yeah. So as Promo says, wouldn't probably be the place that I would I'd be looking to buy as an investment. He said, why would I give him chocolate when he's been a pain in the ass from day one? Tells me nothing but lies and chases me when he wants something and ignores me when he likes. Bad experience. It's like having a boyfriend, isn't it? <laughs> uh, cool beans. I haven't called the police on him yet. <laughs> well, don't don't do it until after you've exchanged contracts. If that's a bit of um, <laughs> a bit of advice I can give. But no, go, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Uh, this is good vibe community. Keep up the good work, guys. Yeah, it's not about me. I'm just, I'm the bowl that's keeping you all guys in. I'm doing that gesture. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. My home is going through nicely. Fantastic. Hoping for August. Excellent. Excellent. Hopefully get some, uh, get out while it's the sun is still out. I was kidding. Wishing you a lot of success, Lee. And EJ, and yes, great to get the different perspective. I oh, know you are, Steve. I know you are. <laughs> uh, like one of my neighbours is similar. I didn't have a problem selling. I would go for it and don't worry. There's nothing you can do to change it. So just be optimistic. I love the optimistic. Better to be optimistic than pessimistic. Love it. Oh, dear. I already shared my server report with the seller. Oh, well, I'm hoping it all goes through. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to say you can't send the report, but it's something that you've paid for and... It's cost you a lot of money to find that information out. If that sale doesn't go anywhere, then that seller has a free server on the house, which they can choose to share with, with somebody else, which I don't think legally they can, but I'm sure they probably will. Or the agent will have access to information. Oh, we passed survey apart from the roof needs doing. So you may want to get a couple of quotes for that. But yeah, but yeah, it'd be good to know if you actually had um, quotes done yourself on that one. Um, oh, it's a different person, different person. <laughs> I should start writing stuff down. I should really start writing stuff down. Right, guys, if you haven't got any more questions, I'm going to go because I've got stuff, stuff I need to get on with. Um, but yeah, and if we could just give the, 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 the video a thumbs up, we're at 34, 35. So if we can get up a little bit more, that'd be fantastic. Um, 
I'm going to be about next Wednesday as well. I don't know what we're going to be discussing next Wednesday, but as I get closer to the time, I'm sure there'll be a new report out. There'll be something going on. Uh, we're not going to talk politics or any crap like that because there's enough of that going on in the news. But um, thank you for watching, guys. Please give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Link in the description or offer a super thanks. Not required, but if we can beat 70 quid this month, there's a challenge for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Lee needs to... Uh, no. No, let's, let's, let's get one thing straight here. I have never watched one episode of Love Island or TOWIE or anything like that. That's, that's, that's not for me, that. <laughs> Even late, asking my estate agent for updates is hard work. Asking once a week if a vendor has found, but he says, I'll update you if I hear anything, and now won't accept my calls. Is this normal? Once a week would be good to chase a solicitor. To chase the estate agent on the chain probably isn't going to go down too well, Cheryl. And welcome back, by the way. Welcome back. Um, we will always, or in my company, will always call a buyer when a chain is complete um, or when my vendor's found somewhere to let know whether that's empty or if um, there will be an ongoing chain. But yeah, I, an agent should always call you once the chain's complete because I personally wouldn't start doing much legal work until I know that chain's complete. So, and a lot of a lot of buyers say, "I'm not going to pay for, my, I'm not going to submit my searches until I know my vendor's found somewhere," which I think is perfectly acceptable. Why should you start spending money on somewhere before your seller's found and start to do the same as well? So, um, I would probably drop it to once every ten days, something like that, ten days, two weeks, which I know can be really, really frustrating. But you calling the agent isn't going to speed up that seller finding somewhere. I'm sure they will tell you as soon as. Um, um, that that vendor has found somewhere. Um, what you could do is you could book a viewing again, speak to the owner and see if they would mind exchanging numbers. Generally, I don't like that um, because if things tend to go a little bit wrong, then sometimes um, yeah, having each other's numbers isn't a good thing. But yeah, you book another viewing. Maybe say, look, we'd really appreciate if you'd let us know um, when you found somewhere just so we can start getting the ball rolling. We've tried the estate agent a few times, but they're not accepting our calls. You can maybe do something like that and just say, look, just just, just take my number. I don't have to have yours. Just text me um, or email me when you uh, when you found somewhere just so I know uh, and we can get um, we, we can get get the ball rolling. So that'd be my advice, Cheryl. Um, but I say, I'm, I'm really, really pleased you got somewhere as well. I say that this, this week and last week has been um, been a great week for, for people finding somewhere and, and, and getting mortgage offers. So um, I hope you've all enjoyed the weather. We will catch up again next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can always email me. If you need a mortgage broker, you can email me here. Um, I will come back to you eventually. If it's time sensitive, put that you need an answer back quickly and I'll prioritize you if I can, if I can, but I get quite a few emails from you guys every week and I, I try to keep up as best I can, but it's not always, always possible. But yeah, any questions that you would miss tonight or I've accidentally gone, gone over, let me know guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. And this is that awkward bit again, where I press end broadcast 